Now that we've found a few more identities, we need to know how we can use these identities. So the question again is, how can we use double angle power reduction and half angle? identities. And so we're going to take each of these one at a time and take a look at some ways we can use them to help us solve or simplify various expressions, starting with the double angle formulas. And those identities that we found were that the sine of some doubled angle, we'll call it 2 alpha, is equal to 2 sine of alpha cosine of alpha. The other one is that the cosine of 2 alpha is equal to cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. But we also found out using the Pythagorean identities that could be rewritten as 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha or as 2 cosine squared alpha minus 1. So this is really two identities. One of them just can be written three different ways with the Pythagorean identity. And so we're going to take a look at how we can use those to help us Maybe look at if the sine of theta is equal to 4 fifths. And we're going to say that our angle theta is in quadrant 2. And then what we're going to attempt to find is not theta. Instead, what we're going to find is the cosine of 2 theta. As we attempt to find cosine of 2 theta, we've actually got three options for cosine that we can use. Cosine squared minus sine squared, 1 minus 2 sine squared, or 2 cosine squared minus 1. But what we know is only about the sine. So we're going to use the one that only uses sine, 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. And then we'll plug in the given information that sine is 4 fifths, 1 minus 2 times 4 fifths squared. And that gives me, using order of operations to simplify, 1 minus 2 times 16 over 25, or 1 minus 32 over 25. 1 is 25 over 25. So 25 minus 32 gives me negative 7 over 25. And so I now know that the cosine of 2 theta is negative 7 over 25. We could also find the sine of 2 theta. Now, the sine of 2 theta has one formula. It's 2 sine theta cosine theta. The problem is we don't know what cosine is. We only know what sine is. So this is where we go over to the side and we say what we do know is that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And if sine is 4 fifths squared plus cosine squared equals 1, that gives me 16 over 25 plus cosine squared equals 1. Subtract 16 over 25. Remember, 1 is 25 over 25. Minus 16 is 9 over 25. And then when I take the square root of both sides, we find the cosine of theta is plus or minus 3 fifths, taking the square root. How do we decide if it's plus or minus? Well, that's where the little information at the end becomes helpful. We're in quadrant 2. 
Quadrant 2 is over here in the top left. Cosine is plus or minus 3 fifths. Cosine is the x coordinate, and here the x is negative and the y is positive, which means we're actually going to use the negative 3 fifths, because in quadrant 2, cosine is negative. So now when I substitute, we have 2 times the sine, which is 4 fifths, times the cosine, which is negative 3 fifths. From there, we just have to simplify. Multiplying across the top, 2 times 4 times negative 3 is negative 24. 5 times 5 is 25. And we now know the sine of 2 theta is negative 24 over 25. So the identities can really help us actually find angles that we don't know using those formulas. But in addition to finding values we don't know, we can also look at simplifying expressions. Let's say we want to know what 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of 18 degrees is. Well, you'll notice that that is the double angle formula. That's set up as the cosine of double the angle, or in our case, the cosine of 2 times the 18 degree angle, or simply the cosine of 36 degrees, and it's completely simplified. So sometimes we'll have an expression that we can simplify. If we wanted to prove something, though, let's do a proof. How about cosine of 2t divided by the cosine of t minus the sine of t. And we're going to say that's equal to the cosine of t plus the sine of t. And the ugly side looks like it's the left side. So we're going to see what we can do with the left side. Well, cosine of 2t has three options. So what we're going to do is match the style of the rest of the problem. And since the rest of the problem has both sines and cosines in it, we're going to use the version that has both sines and cosines in it. So in our case, that's going to be the cosine squared theta minus sine squared of theta over the denominator is still, oops, we're not doing thetas. Actually, we're doing t's. Cosine squared t minus sine squared of t over the cosine of t minus the sine of t. And what's nice about that numerator is we notice that numerator is a difference of squares. It's cosine t plus sine t times cosine t minus sine t over our denominator of cosine t minus sine t which is really nice because it's factored. We can reduce, and we're left with just the cosine of t plus the sine of t, which was what we wanted. We have proved our identity. It matches. We'll also use these formulas from time to time to help us solve equations. Let's say if we've got the cosine of 2t is equal to the cosine of t. And let's just solve it on 0 to 2 pi. Well, again, cosine of 2t has three options. So we'll match the style of the rest of the problem. The rest of the problem only has cosine. So we're going to use the one that has just cosine. 2 cosine squared t minus 1 equals cosine of t. And we've solved problems like this before. We just have to make it equal to 0 by subtracting the cosine of t from both sides. Then we can factor 2 cosine t times cosine t gives us 2 cosine squared. 1 times 1 gives us the negative 1. And we place our signs to make sure they're right. And we can see that the cosine of t is negative 1 half or that the cosine of t is 1. And we know we can solve that real quick off our unit circle. Cosine is negative 1 half. Those are the short distances. 
backwards because it's negative, up and down. That's going to be pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Cosine is 1 over here. Oops, that's not 1 pi over 3. That's 2 pi over 3. 1 pi over 3 would be in the right quadrant. The other point that we need is a positive 1. That happens over here at 0. And so we have three solutions. t is equal to 0, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. So we can see there's lots of ways we can use these identities. Let's kind of do a similar look at working with the power reduction identities. First, what are those identities? There were two of them. There was cosine squared, which is equal to 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta over 2. And they were sine squared, which is equal to 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta over 2. And if you remember when we proved these, I said both of these are going to be important to know for calculus. specifically calc 2. They're going to allow us to do what's called integrate cosine squared and sine squared. But right now, we're just going to play with them so we can get kind of comfortable with how we can use them. But these two identities are going to be important to us, cosine squared and sine squared. So let's try, let's just rewrite sine to the fourth power with no exponents. Well, sine to the fourth power, we can rewrite that as sine squared squared. And that way, we've got that sine squared that we can recognize from our formula. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. And then that whole thing is squared. And from here, it just becomes an exercise in algebra to clean up and simplify that. Uh, let's go down here below. Squaring the numerator gives us 1 minus 2 cosine of 2 theta plus cosine squared of 2 theta all over 4. The problem is we still have a cosine squared, and the rule was no exponents. So we'll use the cosine squared formula. But first, let's uh, divide everything by 4. I think that's going to make it easier to work with. We're going to have 1 fourth minus 2 fourths, which reduces to 1 half cosine of 2 theta plus 1 fourth times the cosine squared of 2 theta. And that cosine squared is what we're going to play with. So we've got 1 fourth minus 1 half cosine of 2 theta plus 1 fourth times. And then we're going to use the cosine squared formula. The cosine squared formula says 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta. We have to double the angle. Right now, the angle is 2 theta. When we double it, we get 4 theta all over 2. And I'm going to divide both parts by 2. And I'm also going to distribute the 1 fourth through, if I can do all that at the same time. So we have 1 fourth minus 1 half cosine of 2 theta plus 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth plus 1 fourth times 1 half is, again, 1 eighth. And then we've got the cosine of 4 theta. 
We actually have a like term in there. 1 fourth plus 1 eighth is 3 eighths. So I'm going to say 3 eighths minus 1 half cosine of 2 theta plus 1 eighth cosine of 4 theta. And what we end up with is an expression that's equal to sine to the fourth, but it has no exponents. It's called a power reduction rule because we reduced the exponents and got rid of them. The other type of uh, identity that we saw or that we derived was the half angle identities. And these allow us to look at the sine or the cosine of half of an angle. We can do the cosine of theta over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine of theta over 2. Or we can do the sine of theta over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta over 2. These are the last two identities we need to know, at least be familiar with. Let's do a couple examples where we work with these. Let's evaluate a few expressions. Let's try first evaluating the cosine of 3 pi over 8. Notice 3 pi over 8 is not one of our key angles. But you might notice that cosine of 3 pi over 8 is half of 3 pi over 4. So we can use our cosine formula and say that's equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of the half angle, 3 pi over 4, all over 2. We should be able to evaluate this from here without much difficulty using our unit circle. 3 pi over 4 we know is 1, 2, 3 pi over 4 over here to the left. Right in the middle, though, we know it's negative root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. So when we plug this in, we get plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosines the x-coordinate of that 3 pi over 4, which is negative root 2 over 2, all over 2. And then we can simplify clearing out that divide by 2 by multiplying top and bottom by 2. That'll divide those out. And so we get plus or minus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 all over 2 times 2 is 4. But now we have to decide, is this a plus or minus? And we decide if it's a plus or minus by looking at the original angle. The original angle was 3 pi over 8. Where would that original angle be? Well, I know the middle is pi over 2, which is 4 pi over 8. So 3 pi over 8 is even less than that. So I know I'm over here in quadrant 1, where the x coordinate is positive and the y coordinate is positive. Cosine takes the x coordinate, which is positive. So I need to only take the positive for my final answer, square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. And this becomes my final answer. Let's also use the sine formula, though. And let's find the sine of 3 pi over 8. Well, just like before, that's going to be the sine of 1 half times 3 pi over 4. And then we'll use our half angle sine formula, which is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of 3 pi over 4 all over 2. I can use the same unit circle that I drew in red uh, right underneath the number 2 there and write that as plus or minus the square root of 1 minus. Cosine, the x-coordinate, is negative root 2 over 2, all over 2. 
Again, I'll simplify by multiplying top and bottom all the way through by 2, which will reduce the 2's. I also have a double negative, which will make it a positive. So I end up with plus or minus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. And then again, I have to decide, is it going to be the plus or minus? We're doing a sine of 3 pi over 8. Using the same brown circle just to the left here, I see the sine is positive there in the first quadrant where this angle falls. So we end up with the positive again, 2 plus the square root of 2 over 4. And this becomes our sine of 3 pi over 8. This video is taking a look at three of our identities, the half angle identities, the power reduction identities, and the double angle identities. These identities are important to help us simplify, solve, evaluate, and prove trig properties. Take a look at practicing these on the homework. Let me know if you have any questions.